I'm done. Okay, let's go. Recording. Recording. Oh, okay. All right, good morning to all of you once again. Today is Friday. Yay! All right, let's start our morning MEO right now with the caption of the day. The caption is okay, 16th of July 2021, Friday. Actually, we should look at the UST, the US Treasury's two year yield. All right, so you can see that hey, how come Kel have been talking about 10 year yield? Why suddenly go to two-year yield? All right, and basically the mainstream media no one covered a two-year yield, right? Everybody just spoke to a ten-year yield. Now there's a reason between the two of them. Okay, there's a difference between the two-year yield and ten-year yield. One is for ten-year yield is more towards the economic growth from the the the, the country, uh, which is US obviously. Then the two-year yield is more towards the interest rate. Yeah, the interest rate factor. So that's why the concentration should be at the two-year yield. But of course. Majority of the time, people all function the 10 year yield. All right, so we'll talk about this in the war. Right? Today, there's a lot about, about yields. So it could be quite impactful in terms of fundamentals. So if traders love information like this, then this will be a very good session for all of you. Okay. All right, let's begin. Disclaimer as usual. Once again, everybody do understand this mind sharing. All right, mind sharing here is for your benefit, for your reference, and obviously for your risk assessment, all right? End of the day is that there's nothing in the world 100%, even though we were right on the gold market, we are right on the NASDAQ, it doesn't mean that every day we'll be right. And of course, there'll be time whereby we'll get it wrong. And of course, we need to make sure our risk management is well taken care of, okay? So that is why you need to consider that this trading activity can be fruitful. It can be also be detrimental to your financial condition. So please make sure that you do your risk management well before embarking into this journey, okay? All right, since you're clear on this, you have accepted the above and indemnify me. All right, Ho Singh, thank you once again. No need to put disclaimer, huh? not every time I spoke. <laughs> okay, all right. So nothing to worry about inflation, question mark. Now, inflation is just like the shark that's lurking around, okay? Now, you all do know that shark don't really attack the human being uh, when they're in the, in, in the open sea. They don't do that unless that you are moving <laughs> like a seal or you are basically... All right, wounded, whereby your blood is coming out to the to the water, and obviously when that happens, it's all right. Sharks will definitely go for the kill. You actually trigger their killing instinct. So as long as okay, the head is still above water for most people with the wages, they think that everything's good. But it's just a matter of time. Wait, right? matter of time when you get too tired with this, you can your wage cannot cover it, your wages cannot sustain it. Then of course this inflation will really bite, and that is the reason why I began to show this pattern to you. Because if you notice this, right, yesterday I think one of us, our students share, right, the broccoli, right, the price of broccoli actually went up a little bit, but it still went up and the amount actually went down. If you look at your, 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 your just hamburgers, okay, you go from this fast food restaurant, right, you look at the burgers, I mean, it's really incredible. Last time you really can be filled with one great, uh, good burger. Nowadays you may have eat two to, to, to be there. Of course, the price is about the same. But that is where they, how they do it. They maintain the price at the level, but they just reduce the size of patty and the bun and everything else. All right. So that is why, to me, there's a lot of reason to worry about inflation. But of course, Jerome Powell and friends think that it is still rather okay. So that's why this morning I have I saw this particular interesting thing from uh, Business Time. Is the BlackRock CEO thing does not see inflation as transitory. All right. He doesn't see it as transitory. But if you look at what Federal Reserve Chief say, that stimulus to continue despite high inflation because he believes it's transitory. So who do we trust? Should we trust the Federal Reserve Chief or should we trust the BlackRock CEO? Now, BlackRock is the biggest, um, biggest uh, hedge fund in terms of assets uh, in trillions of dollars versus Federal Reserve Chief, all right, the most, in, most important, most influential man in life. Right? So what do you think? Who should we trust? In terms of uh, this, can you let me have your your this take? BlackRock or Fed Chief? Right, me answer right now before we continue this. Come on, I wait for your answer. Okay, Let's get some water first. <laughs> right, only uh, Colleen has just replied. How about the rest? There's forty one of you guys right now. Okay, still only see. One Colin <laughs> giving me the feedback. How about the rest? Oh, okay, coming in already. Ah, 
Adrian say bat, Lloyd say black rock, Anthony say black rock. Okay, so we have more black rock today. It's fat chief. Um, Eric says fat chief because you can print to keep inflation away. <laughs> wow, this one must give a like. How? <laughs> okay, fat say a uh, housing say fat. Danny say fat, and Fred say black rock. All right. I think that uh, my answer is very clear. If you actually see the time from Ellen Greenspan time to Bernanke to Yellen to today's serum power, answer is pretty clear. They have a job to do. And the job to do is to technically, technically lie with a straight face. <laughs> okay, all right. So I think the answer is pretty clear. All right. So we all know that it won't be transitory because look at it, the price of our, our, our meals, our cost is just keep on going higher. When did it go lower? When the last time you see price going lower? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, think about this, okay? A, pl a plate of chicken rice from $2 to $2.50 to $3 to $3.50. When do you see the chicken price, price came back down? Unless it's like doing promotion, correct? Now. So let's just face it, okay? We, it's about how high it go, but versus will it be transitory? It will not be. It will just be just going up slowly and steadily, and hopefully that our income can just cover that. So that's why it's about our wages, whether can we stay afloat. All right, so that's why today Jim Rogers is in, all right? I just wait until there is money lying in the corner, and all I have to do is to go over there and pick it up. I do nothing in the meantime. I think this is a very powerful quote that you guys can consider, all right? Now, whether it's Arun, whether it's M Trader, I believe Sister Cynthia too do that. They will wait like a sniper, like Travis too, okay? Wait like a sniper. They just wait and wait and wait until that moment comes in, they're fired. So that's the reason why I realized that when the price comes down, right, people get pan they panic and say, oh, price coming down. Should we short now? Should we go and sell now? My point is this, uh, the TWB system is all about CCRY for buying, right? So CCRY means the red must appear first, then the yellow can, can, then can come in. So if you want the yellow, you need to have the red around, right? So that's the reason why you need CCRY. So that's the reason why we have to understand this. So patience is one of the most valued skills in trading. You have to remember to only strike when the time is right. I think that's a very powerful quote. All right. Okay. All right. Fred is driving. Okay. Careful. Huh? Okay. Don't worry about typing when you're driving. Please relax. Okay, so I think this is a very good quote. Now, as I said before, right, many years ago, I had the honor to have Jim Rogers sitting beside me, and uh, I literally interviewed him for 25 minutes, and I tell you that it's one of my happiest moments in my life and most regret moment of my life. Because happiest is that I learned so much from him. Regret is that I never listened to him. Okay, if I listened to him during that time, right, wow, I would make a lot of money, man. He was telling me about the decay. He's telling me about the commodities market. Yeah, that was way, way before his book was out. And if I were to listen to him, oh gosh. <laughs> so really, in my now in my next three years in my life, actually, I really think one of my one of my bucket lists is that to meet him again. And of course, I know he won't remember me, but I will try my best to let him recall. And I would love to sit beside him and talk to him for another 15, 20 minutes. I think that would be excellent. Of course, now we can do that, like you pay him, you pay him for his service. But I kind of like, I see one way or another, can I find another way to meet up with him? Okay. So that is obviously something that, one of my least that I really want to do that. Okay. All right. Jim Rogers. All right. So there are many reasons to stay bullish right now. And today, there are many, many of them. Let me share with you. Okay. Now, Jeffrey Gunlock, right, says that stocks can stay at nose bleed levels as long as the stimulus continue. I mean, this is a bit of a small towards telling you that, okay, if so, you know, uh, the stock is a very high price now. It's no speed attitude level, uh, attitude level. But thing is that as long as the stimulus is there, it's good. So it's a bit of like both sides. Then you stay by, but just be careful, okay? So that's why I put it into this area. Okay, double line CEO Jeffrey Conlock, right? He is known to be the bond market king. I do know about that. Huh? Okay, he says that the market will still continue to go record level as long as the unprecedented um stimulus program continue to support the economy from the pandemic remains in place, okay? So as long as this free monetary policy continue, that it's gonna be higher and higher and higher. So the so-called bond king also acknowledged that the Federal Reserve playing in lifting equity with the open-ended quantitative easing and near zero interest rate. So when you are able to print and you are able to give so much money, right? There's no way the stock market can go down. 
So that's the reason why he is telling people that, look, this is a good reason for buying. But of course, on his own, he already altered his portfolio a few months ago, uh, a few months ago to increase his stock holding and reduce his cash position. Okay. So that is the thing is that say that he already, he, he's, he although have been calling for a dangerous period, but he also noticed that since the Federal Reserve is not going to change our mind, then of course he also had to increase his stock holding. So it's a bit different, right? A few months ago, he was calling for sell, but now he altered his position. That's the reason why I tell you this, even Jeffrey Gunlock, right? One of the, one of the uh, opportunist bear is also now looking to buy side. So that's why I need to share this with you. So there's one thing to take note of, and I think that's a takeaway for today. The bond market is thinking on one move ahead in the chess game that the Federal Reserve may actually have started doing uh, some, uh, doing something, right? Seriously reducing this bond buying program, okay? And of course, they, they are telling you that they, is that they should be doing that, okay? And uh, this is why, take note, huh? in reaction to recent hot inflation readings, Long-term in treasury yields have been falling while the short-term counterparts have been rising. So in short, the 10-year yields, which is more tied to the economic growth, fell as low as 1.299%, which is what happened recently, right? Then the two-year yield, which is the most sensitive to the federal policy, rose to as high as 0.233% after staying at 0.7% for the last three months. So what is happening right here is that it's very clear for the bond market, the yield itself, right, it's like a chess game, is showing that there is a very serious potential or contention that the Federal Reserve is going to reduce the bond buying. All right, and God forbid uh, to raise the interest rate, which I don't think will happen that so soon. But to do the tapering or AKA reducing bond buying is possible. So what I did is that I searched for you, and I, this is how it looks like for the two-year treasury yields. You notice that since last year, August until now, right, all the way you have been staying at 0.15%. But recently, it's uh, when the yields is coming down from the, for the 10-year yield go down all the way, but the two-year yields went up. So this actually tells me very clearly that actually, right, the market is purposely putting a smoke screen to tell you, hey, don't worry, the 10-year yields is down. So that means that the inflation is kept intact and the economy is okay. But in, 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 the, in the real world, what is happening right now is that the, the two-year yield is going up. So that means that it's moving forward. That means the two-year yield is coming up, right? That means the bond price is coming down. That is the reason why there is seemed to be some tapering on the two-year side. And because likely that is, this tapering process is going to happen. So that is the reason why I felt that, right, we are looking the wrong thing, but at least in my perspective. And of course, now with Gunlock saying that, right, then we are even clearer that that is why I say that if the two-year years had to go past two, 0.25%, right, I believe it will shake the market a little bit. And after that, if let's say the 10-year yields also had to go up again, I mean, had to go up too, right? Then of course, we are quite sure that is the direction of this uh, bond tapering is going to happen soon, right? So that is the view here. So you can see that yesterday we saw some movement, okay? The, all the penny counters went down, NASDAQ, Dow Jones came down. But again, amazingly, at about 2 a.m. Singapore time, wow, straight away the Dow Jones just recovered all the way to scramble to close and green. And NASDAQ also recovered a little bit of the lows. So that is the reason why there's so much money in the system. There's so many program buying, so, much, so many program buying, so many algorithm in the market. There is really no way the market can come down. So that's why no matter how, no matter what I say in terms of the to be careful, I mean, we're saying that, but you must understand there's so much money in the market. So every time when the market comes down, you buy, you don't know why you're buying, but you know that after you buy, the price will go up, right? So just follow through, make the money. So what you can do is that there's two ways out here. One way is that you can totally stay on the market until you think it's cheap enough to buy, or you can still go long, but go small. And then after that, okay, when the price goes much higher, then you can do discretional, I repeat, discretional short at the top. But of course, discretional top, right? If the market goes higher, you need to stop loss, right? So that's the reason why I say quick, just make more money first on the long side of the market temporarily. Until the market hit a peak, then you do what you need to do, all right? So you can see that the bond yields continue to fall since yesterday to today. All right, I mean, sorry, the day before until yesterday, the yield keep on coming off. And because Federal Reserve Evans says that, right, there's no inflation and it's transitory, you don't need to be worried. And because of that itself, right, you can 10-year yields coming down, look at it. 
So you look at the 10 year yield versus the two year yield, you realize that the two year yield is going up, but the 10 year yield is coming down. So that is not really going according to the book. So that means that the market, someone is manipulating the market and of course showing you the different part of it. So all you can know is that the worst thing to come is only when the 30, the 10 year yield goes up at the same time, uh, then where is that is where you know that the tapering process should be coming soon because the bond market is so big, so large, and definitely, right, anyone who is controlling it, right, if there's any changes in their direction, it will reflect instantly inside here itself. So traders, just watch this closely. As long as the 10 year yield stays down, the market is still good to go, all right? And of course, this is the real yields continue to plunge, right? The real yield inverted, uh, inverted, I think note of that. Real yield means inverted, uh, the other side, uh. Okay, so you can see that now, right, all the way when the real yields is going up recently, the gold price goes up. Then the real yield come down, the gold came down. Now, the real yield go up so fast because that means that the yield on the 10 year actually go down very fast. The gold is not able to kind of, what do you call, follow through with it. So what do you think? Do you think that the yield, the inverse yield will come down to meet gold or you think that gold will go up to meet the inverse yield? All right. So give me your trade, your answer right now, everybody. What do you think? You think that gold will go up or the yield will come down? What do you think? Up, go up, G-O-L-D, go up or yield down. Okay, what do you think, guys? Let me see your answer right now. Now, today's Friday. I love to, I love you guys to, to let's just interact a bit more and let's just get involved with a bit more and let's just see whether can we learn from one another, okay? I think that will be a lovely experience. Okay, come on. Okay, Colin says that the yield will come down. Okay, the yield come down means the inverse, uh, inverse yield. Uh. Okay, yield will come down. Go say Jane will go, um, Jane say go will go up. Michael say go will go down. Wow, go will go down further. Oh, okay. And uh, prefer go to go up the meet up yield. Okay, meet halfway, Anthony. Both will go up at the same time. And uh, Jeffrey, Geoffrey, right? Uh, Geoffrey, Geoffrey, sorry. Joe Free says uh, go to go up. Okay. Now, um, if, like, in my perspective itself, right, uh, I believe that this is going to happen, my, my view. Okay. All right. Thank you for contributing. Now, I believe that sooner or later, right, because of the bond tapering that should happen soon, that will cause the yield to go up. So the inverse yield will come down. Okay. The inverse yield will come down. Now, because of that itself, right, the volatility will cause the stock market to go into a little bit of panic mode. Hence, therefore, the stock market comes down, right? The goal will actually be going up a bit. So I believe that, yes, indeed, there will be a mean of halfway like this. Yeah, that means that the inverted yield will come down and the gold price will go up. Yeah, there will be a midpoint. So which means that you look at the midpoint, if we do a bit of like speculation, that means that we are seeing about here. That means about 1900 to about 1910 level, okay? Or 1920 to be precise. That means that the later on, if the inverted yield do come down, there is a small possibility that we can see that the gold price will see a little bit of a upside all the way to 1900 to 1920, okay? So that is just only a rough personal expectation, okay? So yeah. So, wow, this whole thing say already, yeah? go up, yield down. Wow, very good. <laughs> okay, whole thing, well done. Okay, all right. Anyway, this is my personal take. It's a, we just see how it goes, all right? Okay, so the thing is this, on the sum side on it, right? The question is this, why would the, the interest rate would be high? Because there's fear of inflation. But people always say, Cal, look, look at lumber price. Oh my God, look at lumber. Lumber price basically, came in, they was like trading as low as high, sorry, at 1710 at one stage, it came all the way down to today of 575. Wow, that means it's down by how many percent? It's okay, half of it itself is about uh, 8950. All right, so that means we're talking about more than 50% drop already. So, wow, is it, is it time to buy the lumber? Now, the question is, why did the number go up again back then? Because there was lack of supply, lack of supply, all right, in the market, and there was a lot of demand back then, so that's why the number price went up, and of course, plus speculation and stuff like that. So now, why the number price is coming down? Is it because inflation is going down? No, inflation is still there, the CPI, the PPI, all is up, right? 
is because now the demand for it is no longer there. People are getting wealthier or they don't think they have already bought what they need to do. That's why the lumber price go back to reality. So now lumber price is going back to where it started the neckline here. And that's the reason why I think that you could look for lumber to buy soon. So lumber now is at 575. If those people who like commodities, you can consider to buy lumber because I kind of suspect that lumber price may be going up soon again. So I repeat myself, I believe that lumber price should be going up in a matter of time in the next six months time. So where could it go? Well, my personal take is about 900, okay? So people who are doing uh, commodity can take this as a little sharing session and see whether am I right, okay? All right, that's a rational reason for that, of course. Okay, so that's why you can see now, right, on the mainstream media, lumber now has cooled off and people are saying that, okay, this is the beginning of the commodity market down draft. I repeat, down draft. That means that they're looking at the commodity prices to go down from here. And of course, Gunlock also says that I don't see upside breakout for commodities. Okay, he's also saying that. So the two of them, this is one of one chartist, this is from this is Gunlock. Both of them are pretty um, sure that the prices will not break out. But Gunlock earlier says that the dollar itself will be coming down. So if the dollar comes down, right, commodity price will go up, right? So it's like huh? in between here and there. So that's why uh, you need to do what, if you are trading the market, you need to really know where you're looking at. Okay, so sometimes itself, right, the views can be a bit interesting, all right? So that is how I'm seeing right now. Okay, so now what we have is that for today, what we have today is the uh, 16 of uh, today, we have Ericsson, Charles Schwab, First Horizon, uh, State Street. I cannot see this, I can't, I cannot see the new brand. I know this is what brand. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, no, I just saying just just forgot. Okay, and auto life. All right. So what you have is that uh, not no no heavyweights. I mean, Ericsson. I don't think they consider heavyweight. So should be okay for today. The market should be uh, sideways. But next week, wow, next week will be the big one. From next Tuesday onwards, Netflix, Chipotle. All right, Holly Burton. These are the big ones. Then after that, next on Wednesday we have Coca Cola. Then we have Johnson and Johnson, obviously. Then after that we have Twitter. Intel, and of course, we have this Honeywell American Express for next week. The third week, right, from the third week, like the way of fourth week, is the big all the fang shares really. Okay, so we'll talk about this later. Okay, so watch out for today. Today is quite a slow day, so I expect the market to be slow. So traders just relax again. Okay? Uh, now, in the second half of the MAO later on, I talk about the options market, the skill indicators, and anxiety index, right? So, and junk bonds, first time ever trades below okay trades below the cpi this is the first time ever in human history this ever happened so i'll talk about this later in the second half of the mao all right now susan continue to do a very good job today susan will still continue to do her day job all right day three, 3 to 5 p.m and at night 8 to 10 p.m now, a friend of mine asked this question now susan is doing a great job and she's showing exactly how to use twb system how come students are not really coming on board and listen? Well, I always say with you, sometime in life, you really, you know, when things are given free, people don't really, you know, take advantage of it, right? They don't really appreciate that. Susan is really a darling. She really know, she really knows things very well and she showcases you what to do and she also trade and she actually shows you guys. So I cannot understand why so little people watch, okay? In my opinion, she should be really, you know, every day she has 50, 100 people watching her because she's doing live trading, right? And she's doing it for two sessions or more, 3 to 5 p.m., 8 to 10 p.m. Well, that's a lot of things. It's four hours. It's longer than my MEO, actually. So guys, don't miss out this thing. If you cannot watch it during the live session, review it. I can tell you, you will definitely learn something from that. Okay, so now let's talk about the local news right now. I think that this is the local news that is hitting us right now. So apparently, right, the first COVID-19 case from the KTV cluster, it came from a Jap you know, Vietnamese short-term visit pass holder. All right, it's confirmed and it's sponsored by his, uh, her boyfriend, a Singapore boyfriend. Okay, so this thing has opened and grown to 87 cases and it poses risk to household, obviously, because many of these people who went to the KTVs go back home, they could have passed with their kids and their loved ones, and this is going to be a big problem, all right? And now you can see that on Monday, there were four cases, Tuesday 8, Wednesday 42, and yesterday 33. So the today, 
tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, I mean, all these are going to be, going to look up. I'm, I'm pretty sure this number will cross 200. I'm pretty sure of this. But, you know, the thing is this, it, the worst thing is hit the kids, all right? So now some of the schools are forced to close because the kids are having the COVID-19. So you see that your so-called little, little adventure has created problems for family. That's why the reason why uh, I apologize for the group chat. Some of the very sensitive stuff I need for you guys to take away because I know that some family members are pretty upset already and we don't want to continue to rub salt, right? And of course, I have friends around me. Don't worry, I didn't get the meet up with them yet. I have friends around me. They actually already got this message already, okay? To stay home, all right? To quarantine for about uh, seven days to 14 days because they are contacted or indirectly contacted with some of the cases, okay? Some of them are on phone surveillance, so do note of that. So anyway, guys, please be serious with this. If you're now on GPS, it's very easy to trace you. Don't make the kind of dumb mistake to go out when you're supposed to stay at home, okay? Right, really not worth it because they are very good with this, okay, guys? So please take note of that, okay? All right, so while we are having a problem right here in Singapore, we are having a clear opening for Freedom Day or Anxiety Day for UK, all right? Apparently, England now has this called a Freedom Day on the this, this coming Monday. Coming Monday is the 19th, right? So on 19th of June, sorry, 19th of July, Prime Minister Boris Johnson plans to move England to step four, the end of the legal lockdown curbs. Okay, so it seems that Boris Johnson is very, very confident that this is good. All right, but if you actually ask the UK, uh, UK scientists, they are actually telling this is like, oh my goodness, what the? <laughs> okay, it's like. Allowing infection to run amok in the country is a serious, dangerous mistake, all right? So this is what coming from a professor, all right? But we all know that the Britain themselves want the COVID restriction to remain, to remain, yes, to remain. So um, I don't know, all right? So that's why we just know that Olympic is going to continue. Uh, Boris Johnson is going to go ahead. So my question is this, I mean, does it mean that someone, with, I mean, maybe something we, we don't know? That is happening outside of Singapore, we should bring that thing come in, the vaccine, the special vaccine, and then we can not leave our mask away. I mean, this is something that I don't understand, but like I say again, we will have very exciting time to come next week, all right, because Olympic and UK all opening up. But of course, the key point is Yellen is saying that there are several more months of rapid inflation, wow, rapid, okay, before easing. So, Worries about housing impact. Hey, not bad, nah. she's finally having no worry. But she said that this is just again transitory, all right? Ultimately, it will fall back to more normal level. So I wonder, have property prices come down actually in life? All right, so you can see that the yields have been going up steadily and now it came off, all right? You can see the point, but if you, again, you do the, if you do the mathematics, the Fibonacci on this, it is very clear, oops, sorry. Okay, if you do the if you do the Fibonacci here, this is 0 0.5, this is uh, 1.75. The midpoint of this one is about here, so we are now in the midpoint area. So once there is any big movement, this can easily go to 2.0, and I think that that will create a bit of problem in the market. So that is my personal view on this, and of course, you can see that. The Jerome Powell yesterday was grilled by Grouchy Senator regarding about inflation and the climate change. And basically they grilled him a lot on the financial protection. And of course the Republican also asked him about his controlling of the inflation. All right, so Senator Warren is one of the one that lead the charge. And of course, uh, Jerome Powell kind of do well. So I think this is something that the take away over the, I mean, it's a, it's a very long article, but I think this is the best takeaway. There is no doubt that the banks are stronger today than they were when they crashed in 2008, which is what this, uh, this uh, all the Federal Reserve Chief from Bernanke to Yellen to Jerome Powell have been advocating. But that's the wrong standard. The question is whether or not they are strong enough to withstand the next crisis and whether the Federal is tough enough to protect the American economy and American taxpayer. I think this is lovely, lovely stuff. You see, 
if you compare what happened in 2008 and today, now obviously now the banks have more money than 2008, more money, all right, more structured, more lesser, lesser this sort of uh, securities that they create to sell, definitely better. So you focus on that, you're not wrong. But the question is this, but the hole that duck to reach to today's is like now five times bigger than 2008, five times bigger. So the question mark is this, then how? What if this thing hits us again, then do the, does the bank have the power or the means to take care of this? That is a question, but if we obviously it's all right. So all the bankers and all the and Federal Reserve is just saying, uh, well, should be roughly the scratch test proof okay, you know, things like that. So that is the problem that, you know, someone is not answering the truth, but at the end of the day, this is how it's going right now. And of course, Elon Musk admits that Tesla's cyber truck could flop, could uh, not will flop, could flop only. And of course, not too sure why or nowhere he doesn't talk about this. But apparently, he received 500,000 of the cyber truck, right? It should be okay. But of course, receive order and follow through. That's another thing, all right? So, in case you forget the cyber truck, look at this, all right? Very interesting shape, very uh, new age feel. Uh, well, supposed to be the, the horsepower is good, everything's look inside there is, is brilliant. But of course, the looks itself, right? Uh, a little bit hard to swallow. La. But anyway, out of nowhere, this Elon Musk come out. So I think that if you don't get some attention, uh, you, can, you, can, you can't live with it. Okay, anyway, that is what he says that they, they create Tesla share to go down. Not really. La. All right. Okay, so what we have in the news right now, let's take a look at the news. The news is pretty clear. We have, Okay, that yesterday the initial jobless claim was exactly wow. First time I see the forecast and the actual is perfect, too, right? First time I see this. So the market buys into that. <clears throat> Only thing is that the Philadelphia Federal the, uh, Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index really went down. So that again tells you that the economy is not good. But of course, from that point, they see that okay, economy not good, right? Then that's why we need to keep the interest rate low. We need to pump the money in the market. So again, the market adjusts accordingly. All right. So that is what happened. Of course, Fed Chairman is to justified already. Now, today will be the core retail sales. Now, the core retail sales, what number are we looking at? Well, my personal take is this. The core retail sales should be slightly higher. Okay. Uh, sorry, lower uh, compared to the forecast. It should be higher than this one here. The last time was 0.7%. I suspect it will go be higher. So it was 0.3%. And retail sales, uh, uh, this is retail, I call this core retail sales. Sun should be about 0.1%. My personal take, anyway, all these are my own personal guessing game here. So I believe that retail sales will go higher because um, this is where the last month, June, uh, June is where the, all the holidays and stuff like that. So likely retail sales should be going higher, but you know, going to be just slightly higher and below expectation. Uh, this is my personal take. So let's see whether or not it comes true. All right. Okay, so that is all we come to the, all the fundamentals that look at the, tech, the, the technical right now. You can see that the Dow Jones have been sideways all the way for the day. Then after that, but it went down a little initially when uh, Kieran Powell was speaking. And after that, he has spoken, the market went back again. So it's always like that. Huh? Nothing has really changed much. Oh, sorry. My PowerPoint, I didn't do it properly. Go on, huh? Now, someone did text me on the side, say, Kel, can we like have lesser news so that actually we get more time on the technical side? Um, well, I think that it, it makes some sense, but I think news is relatively important because you will get to feel the market and see what the big boys are doing. And then from there, you arrive what is happening in the daytime and you can just adjust accordingly. But of course, if you want me to reduce the news segment, I can do that. You know, I can do that, not a big problem. Then we can cut down to one hour or lesser. Okay, S&P 500 closed lower as investors brush off better than expected earning result. Now, why I want to cover this because you must understand that Morgan Stanley came out better earnings as expected. So all the banks are doing well, but interestingly, the banks doesn't go up much after the earnings. So that's something that's concerned. Then majority of the companies, 18 now of them have very beat the estimates, right? But you notice that S&P is not going up, right? So again, there's a question mark here. And of course, Investors are still looking at technology company because they are the company, because as long as Federal Reserve do not hide interest rate in the near term, this company will still get to benefit, all right? Now, what is very important is that, right, the Jerome Power maintain the central bank uh, easy money policy. That's very important. And they feel that the challenge is how to react to this inflation. 
but this inflation is tem temporarily. So it's not appropriate to react immediately. We just let it go slowly, it will come back down to normal. All right. So that is what Jerome Powell says. And seem that the market just buy on it after a while later. All right. So for news right now, at the moment, the news shows that the market it is kind of mixed back right now. Some of the counters are going down. Some of the counters are like technology are still maintaining. So the question is, what do we do? All right. So let's look at the chart to review what happened yesterday. All right. So yesterday was a pretty dry day. The opening price was between the two pivot. The KSI is green in color. So before we even start trading, you should tell yourself this. If the market is to go down, right, go down to KTR minus one, look out for buy for CCRY. Now, of course, you can go to KTR minus two, minus three. But as long as you go to KTR minus one, minus two, or minus three, and come with a CCRY, I think it's a good time to buy. All right, because the KSI is green. That is what I'm saying and I'm repeating and repeating, right? And did it actually happen? Voila, it really happened. Look at it. The market did come down to C the did came down to KTR minus one, did the CCRY with the BMB, and it was good. It went up a bit. But before it can go up higher, it came down. So of course, you get stopped out from this trade. That means you will lose money. Now, even though the BMB is there, everything looks good, but if the market is not ready, you can't help it, right? Then it came all the way down, but there was no CCRY. Then after that, there's a CCRY kicking in, and that is where you will buy, all right? This is where you will look to buy. Isn't that correct? This is where you buy, and then your stop loss place here. So if you stop loss place here, you will not be stopped out. Now, for people who miss it and they go back in again, you could be buying here again, all right? And the stop, the stop loss will be here. And of course, after two buy signal, eventually, you get it beautiful. The market went up and hit OP because the KTR is here, right? The next target will be OP, you know? So the market hit OP and you get yourself lucky with this trade and make money from that. And of course, why this trade go up? We notice that during this period of time, the KSI was red in color. But when the market goes up, right, the KSI turned green. So that's why the KSI gave you the validation on this trade. And that's why the stock market goes up. So you really need to have a system to play this better and not trying to second guess what the market's going to tell you and what to do, all right? And if you remember the rules, just trust the KTR, just trust the KSI day chart, you will know what to do. All right, so that is how we actually shorted the market and then bought back again later on. Okay, so that is the Dow Jones in the re for the recap. Let's look at the real market now, the, the live market right now, take a look. Okay, so let's go. First of all, before we go into the live market, let's look at what's happening now in the China market first. Okay, the Chinese market now, uh-oh, it's coming down again. All right. Now, yesterday, <clears throat> excuse me. Yesterday, the China A50 went up, right? So we thought that this is actually a bottoming sign, but now it seems to come back down again. So let's just redraw the trend line again. So with a modern, this is the BMB, blue one, the BMB. Okay, so we draw the MLP. The MLP now is where we are right now. The market is at MLP. So if the market stays above MLP, the market will rebound. But now we can see that there is a bit of problem because this is the this is the BMB, right? So it should if it's if the case it should come down. All right. I think it came down already, triggered already. Yeah, so no need to talk about the BMB here. So the only thing is that there is a technical point that I have uh, shared with you. This is the technical point at 1416, sorry, 16436. Okay. 16436. Four, three, six, and I said before, as long as the market, as long as the market stays uh, above one six four three six, it's fine. But because this is a very powerful neckline that was also triggered with the MA thirty, and <clears throat> the last time it almost touched it, almost touches it. So I believe that it should come down to just form, form formality, not <clears throat> formality, just touch it and then maybe from there rebound. So it's just to clear off all the weak folders and then after that go up. Because look at the movement now in RSI, it is a very good chance that this may actually come down all the way to see this price 16,436 before it embark its recovery. Okay, so that's how I see uh, for this market right now. Okay, for China A50. And of course that will give me Hong Kong direction. Now Hong Kong is now trading slightly lower uh, from the high of the high, and let me see how do we look at this chart right now. Um, okay, 
through the media, right? Okay, let me just take away all this first. Okay, so first of all, we have the MA30 is on top, MA200 is on top. So that means the downside pressure is still there. The nearest BMB is yesterday's chart. Today, okay, so this is the BMB RL and this is the BMB SL. Okay, so we have the BMB RL and SL and the market now is swinging between the two. Okay, so in short, you can see that if the market do breaks above the RL level, it will break the MA30. Of course, it may go out of the way to MA200. On a flip note, if the price comes down, it should stabilize around here. That is the M this is the BMB level. That, the, the, that was where the last time it is. So if the market couldn't stay up and goes down, then of course the range here itself is pretty sizable. So how much is that? Let's take a look. All right, this range is about well, 530 points, so which means that the downside of 530 points, we should see somewhere like this, about 27,000 area. So which means that if the market do break down, we can see the, the market breaking down to 27,100. Okay, so traders, you can think note of that. Okay, yeah. okay, so that is the uh, Hang Seng for you. Right, for today's uh, Hang Seng day chart, let's take a look. Now, Hang Seng day chart today is interesting. Interesting, let's take a look. Huh? Okay, Hang Seng opening price today is between is below p2 is below p2 so by right if it goes below op it's a sell but because the ksi is green if it goes above op it became a buy and because the ksi is above op it will naturally go to ktr plus one rather easily okay that is what it's supposed to be based on what i'm seeing on the ksi now and if it goes above p2 which is 27901 right it should have a higher upside so let's take a look what really happened today Wow, really, yeah? So you can see that once the market opened, right? It opens here, it couldn't go down. And after that, immediately it went up, right? So I told you, it will hit KTR plus one. And indeed, it really, really happened. Okay, it really, really happened. All right, so that's the reason why if you have the KSI with you, you will know exactly what to do on a day to day. And because of that itself right now, it's still hovering at KTR plus one rate. So for Hang Seng, if let's say it still go up, right? Hang Seng can go all the way to KTR plus two because that the KSI for today is green in color. Okay, this is something that you must understand. So on the same note of this here itself, right? Unless the market breaks down the OP, then going down to KTR minus one, which is here, 27,224, it is possible, okay? So traders, there's two sides of it. Just take note of that. Okay. Huh? Okay. So what we have now is the Hang Seng. Okay. Now let's get the Dow right now. Now the Dow. Okay. We have a very interesting thing happening. We have a Dow yesterday purposely test the BMB RSL level, and once it tested it instantly rebounded that's why this is a very powerful number 34,780 this is a very powerful level for the um, Dow Jones as long as the Dow Jones stay over 34,780 there is no reason for the market to fall so take note of this number next number is that right of course if we can stay out of the way you go all the way to the RL level and this could propel the market to even higher level later in the coming weeks, okay, if the market can break above the BMB and RL and goes above it, okay, that's the one thing to watch out for for this market right now for the Dow Jones. And of course, the Dow Jones is still now way above the MA200, MA2, uh, MA30, so there's no reason to panic right now. All is good for the indices, okay, and what John Locke say, the market has great difficulty to come down because everything just looks so positive right now. Weekly chart, white. Weekly chart basically is still hovering above the 
BNB RL level, and also it is still above the uptrend, the in the small term near term trend line. So we can see that everything is still very positive at this very moment. Okay. So for the Dow Jones, let's take a look at the Dow right now. The Dow, 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 Dow. So okay, the Dow today interesting, huh? The Dow interesting, huh? The Dow opening price today it is above the pivot one. So by right, above OP, above pivot one is a buy. But unfortunately, now the price came off from OP. Wait for a while and see whether can the market stays above the pivot one. If we stay above pivot one, then the market may actually go up and this may cause upside movement, right? Because today is uh, above pivot one, above OP is a buy signal, right? So you heard me. And plus the KSI is green, it's confirmed on the buy side. Okay, so traders can look at that. But of course, if it goes below the P1, then the buy cannot be activated. Then you may want to do a short term sell. But because the KSI is green, then you must take profit at KTR minus one. Okay, or more. Okay, you can decide. Okay, so that is the Dow Jones for us. Okay, let's look at the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ is kind of weak at the moment. Now, NASDAQ is coming off. And I, I did say that NASDAQ, right? If you look at it, uh, the NASDAQ, the BMB, eh, where is it? Uh, the BMB, yeah, the BMB is this guy here. And now it initially went up, missed by the one time one by a little bit. And now it come back now. And yesterday, you can see that the market closed slightly below the BMB RL level. And with that, that means that there is a possibility that the NASDAQ may come down back to here, which is the BMB SL level and about, and this level is at one, four, six, three, five. Okay. And very important, this is very, very near to the MA30. Um, and of course, this could create a big of uh, bottom near signal. And after that, if the market is stabilized and you think that the market will go higher, and that is where you can consider to buy up again. All right, so that is what I'm looking at right now for the NASDAQ. Okay. All right, that's what I'm looking at for NASDAQ. And let's look at the NASDAQ day chart, shall we? Now the NASDAQ day chart is pretty clear. It is, everything looks still positive. The opening price is between the two pivot, but the KSI is green in color. So that is whereby if the market stay above OP, it is possible for the NASDAQ to go back to 14,920 or even go even higher and stuff like that. But of course, if the market choose to go down, which is now uh, people are worried about the some of the numbers, then of course NASDAQ, there's a bunch of numbers here. You can come down all the way to 14,678. So it's about 100 points away, like, it's possible. Okay, so traders uh, watch the NASDAQ. And how about today is the first time doing a CCYR. So of course there is some, uh, some uh, traders getting worried about this. Okay, so that is the NASDAQ and look at the S&P 500. S&P 500 is also trading a bit lower right now because it's a keyboard. Uh, affected by the NASDAQ. So if you look at the S&P 500, this is MLP for now. And also there is a BNB recently, right? The BNB recently. So this is the high and this is the low. All right. So if the market now goes below the SL, then that means that another level, we can look for the market to buy already. So somewhere around here. But of course, the uh, ME30 is also nearby. So the ME30 combined together will be a lovely buy up. Okay. So traders, if you want to look for maybe a long-term uh, positioning, then watch out for NAS, uh, FSMP when it comes down to the price of 4318 region. Okay, 4318 region. Now it's 4352, so it's still about 30 points away from 30 to 40 points away. So it's still far. Okay. All right, so we have all the things covered, and uh, of course, SP needs to cover a little bit. SP 500, let's take a look. SP, also, same thing between the two pivots. KSI is green, so all looks well. Okay, look out for KTR minus one for buying potential. Okay, so we have covered all the indices. Let's look at the DAX market. Now, DAX yesterday fell. Wow, look at DAX. Yesterday fell, right? Yesterday, uh, the DAX actually. Was a BNB and well, incredibly, look at it. The market is the BNB range, right? 
the market came down exactly. Let me show you to you that with the BMB one. That is so powerful. One. Okay, so this is the BM, this is a BMB one time one indicator. And if you look at it, if you put it with DAX, huh? DAX, there you go. Look at it. Wow, yesterday brilliant the DAX. Okay, this is the BMB RL. This is the BMB SL, right? And of course, yesterday if you shorted the DAX right here and you do the one time one. Oh my goodness, you have bought that at a very good price. And this is like basically from this point to this point, it's about 100 points. Wow, that's a lot of money. So if you trust the system, you trust the, the indicator and you know that what will happen, you can sell the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ somewhere around here and then look for to profit on the way here. Not, not 10 point, 20 point, but looking at potential 200 point, I'm sorry, 100 point and the market, once you reach there, incredibly you turn ready. And I said this many times before, right? It's very normal to see this happening in a bullish market whereby the market goes down, hit the technical point and then after that rebound. It's very, very normal. So guys, do make sure that do your BNB every other day. I'm very sure you guys will benefit of it. I love my BNB, I'll tell you that. I really, really love my BNB. Okay, so that is the uh, um, the DAX yesterday. If you look at DAX on its own, yesterday, DAX. Right, beautiful. Yesterday, the market opening price was here. And of course, uh, why do we have that line there? That was basically the, I believe that was the, the previous KSL that is not really no longer in use. So, sorry. Okay. okay, so what happened to DEX yesterday? DEX opened straight away, it went down, all right? It went down and there was no reason, KSI was red, green color, there's no reason but again, as I say, once there's no reason, you be careful because this is the BMB, right? And I told you before, when the market goes up and it's a BMB, what will happen? Anyone can tell me? When I, I shared it before, right? Whenever there's a BMB and a BMB is at the highest of the, this entire rally or the lowest in this rally, what will likely happen? Right, if you actually remember this slightly, if you put two lines into the, in the system, right? If the market goes below it, you can see selling. And indeed, that was what happened. Now, what was the scary part of this whole thing is that look at the day low and the pivot to, oh my goodness. That means that when the market opened this in during the daytime, you will notice that the pivot to is 15590. And if you have shorted it because of whatever rule you have, and you can buy back exactly at this almost the, in the low of the day, the low of the day was 15589. One point different. And already after that, the price goes up. If you look into the 15 minute, uh, the five minute chart, you can see beautiful, beautiful movement there. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is what exactly happened yesterday. Uh, okay, so the market initial one, the first one came down, it's a BNB already. Okay, for DEX, it's M5, huh? already got BNB. Then after that, what happened? The price started to go down all the way, all the way, all the way. But it misses KTR minus two. Then after they try again, miss again. And then after that, what we saw was that this is the point whereby the market triggered the, the triggered the KTR minus two. And then after that, basically, right, it just looks like to sell. And of course, all the sell will all ends at KTR two because it's the nearest one. And indeed, we cover back some over here. We cover near the low. And of course, after that, the market recover all the way up. Okay, so that's the reason why if you follow the rules, there are ways to trade this market. Okay, so that was happened to the Dow Jones, the DAX and everything. Let's just look at the Nikkei. Sorry, means on Nikkei. Now this is Nikkei, Nikkei, I gap down this morning. It's off the lows, but it gap down. And again, there's a death force there. That's why it's selling. It's actually something that is moving in the market, okay? All right, if you look at it on its own. For today, Nikkei. Now today's Nikkei is down and it should be going down further. Why? Because the market opening price is between two pivot. 
and the KSI is red in color. So likely it will go down lower. I suspect Nikkei will come down to 27,000. Um, 27,742. Okay, I will write it down. I believe that Nikkei will be coming down to this level today or tomorrow. Okay, that is for Nikkei. All right, guys, uh, hopefully you're still around with me. Now we can talk about Nikkei, we we'll talk about Go and now, right? Before we start this thing, let me see if you guys are around first or not. If you're around, please key the word Go, G O L D, all right? And I don't see much people leaving any like button for me, Ling. <laughs> Thank you to those who leave the like button for me. Thank you, appreciate that. We got Eugene, Richard, Susan, Anthony, Han Yu, David, Janet, Eric, Hosting, Koming. Yeah, now the numbers are coming up. <laughs> 18 now. Okay, thank you guys. <clears throat> okay, just to make sure you guys are not asleep. Okay, okay. Now, gold basically hit a one-month high as the dovish federal stands leave bullion appeal. So remember, one month ago, we were all calling for buying gold when we had Benedict, we had Yao Tong, and myself talking about gold, remember? Ah, we say to buy gold, right? Now gold already goes up. So some of you have already made money from gold. Congratulations to you guys, okay? So for me, uh, I'm definitely... Um, you know, for me, is that for gold, I would say that this is not the best time for me to buy gold to keep for long term, but to trade gold is fine. Okay, to trade gold is fine as long as you follow rules, should be okay. All right, so let's visit what happened on gold yesterday. Let's take a look now. Gold yesterday, the opening price was between the two pivot, and again, the KSI was green, so it's a no brainer. The market below, there's no blue bar, so straight away at 6 a.m., you call me up and take care. Market opening between two pivot, KSI is green, and um, no blue bars. What do you suggest? And my answer will be very straightforward. I'll tell you the face. Look for KTR minus one to minus three for CCRY. Or look out for plus one or OP, that trigger OP or plus one for CCRY. But of course, between the two of them, I of course would like this one because you buy cheap. The one, this is called a follow through. Got it? Right. Do you got it? Those who got it, please keep got it. This is what you do at 6 a.m. in the morning every single day. All right. Of course, you don't, you don't need to wake up at 6 a.m. to do this, but I'll give you an example. Because go actually open at 6 a.m., right? So rather than you see the go up, down, up, down, up, down, right, and don't know what to do with it, I'm telling you, this is how you do it. All right, especially when the market opens between the two pivot, right? This is like a class, this is like a roll, uh, 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 <laughs> a roll out uh, SOP, okay? So you just have to follow it and then wait for it to happen. So if you really follow what I say, then you will notice that the whole day, <laughs> nothing much you can do. You ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, okay? Then that is when, right, we start to look at it. Now, the market did trigger the op but it's so far away so it's theoretically not very uh, it's not good to enter but because there is a kcx at the bottom and go now is no longer in a bearish position you can buy go here okay that means that you can buy let me just put it away this is where the kcx is right so you see cry you buy your go here the stop loss put it here okay this is where your stop loss is okay and then this is your entry, this is your stop loss, this is your X factor. So if you follow through the X factor or you do the $2 profit, you will make money, really. Very simple because this KCX trade comes with the KSI green and the blue bar is retreating. So this is very bullish buy. Excellent, those who got it, excellent. Thank you, guys. Okay, then after that, you make your money already, right? You just wait for a while. Then after that, the market come back down again. Bang, 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 bang. So when it came back down again, this guy is a BNB. This guy is a CCRY. Man. So is it a buy? Yes, it is a buy because it triggered OP. But you say, Cal, the moment I buy only, right, the market came down and I got stopped out. Yes, this one, you will be stopped out. But Cal, below got KCX, right? All good, man. Yeah, correct. It's all good. But you notice there's a problem here, my friends. The KSI is red. That means the boys are selling. So even you buy, you have to go slow or your quantity must 
reduce. That is my point here. If not, why we have the KSI in the intraday chart? Then after that, someone asked me, Cal, can we buy here? This is a BNB, right? A BNB. Then it's CCRY. Can we buy? Can I ask you guys, can we buy? Now, based on KCX, you can buy. Based on KCX, you can buy, and the $2 profit was given. But if it's not KCX trade, it's just a normal trade, the answer is no. There's no trigger involved here. So you cannot buy. Is that correct? Is that no trigger here? Anyone can tell me? All right, is this correct? My statement here, I just said, this particular trade that I just mentioned, is this a valid trade with a trigger? So do you see a trigger here? Can anyone tell me yes or no? I wait for your answer. Do you think there's a trigger to buy for this particular trade? Can I have the answer from all of you? Hmm? No answer yet? Or is it that some no? Cheng Kui say no. Ziming say yes. Andrew say no. Okay, how about the rest? Now, this is the MAO, right? It's also a good time to revise. Okay, end of the day, majority of the content are all for you guys. Okay, so it's a good time to do something. Okay, now, apart from KCX, apart from here, is it a trigger? All right, is that a trigger? Okay, Louis say no. Uh, this Ong say no. Okay, David Chong say no. All right, so, okay, so a lot of no's, huh? Okay, all right. So let me explain to you this. If we were to go back into the books, right? We already say that, okay, when the market triggers something, all right, there must be either is the, the entry, the, it has to be the entry bar that trigger or the signal bar that trigger. So the entry bar, obviously, and the signal bar, obviously, it will be too yellow, right? <clears throat> Correct, no? The signal bar must be yellow, the entry bar must be yellow, right? Then prior to that, these two are yellow, this must be the red, right? Correct or not? So the red bars before another yellows here, example. So by right and theory, by right and theory, right? The red and the yellow of this entire color change is part of the setup. And as long as any of them trigger something, it's considered. So by right, by right, this bar here is part of the CCRY here. Can you see that? The CCRY is part, this red bars are part of it. So by right, that is a trigger. By right, it's a trigger. Okay, this is a trigger. But by, if you look at it, right, this trigger came from the R guy. It's not the yellow, not the yellow bar guy. So of course, the, that will be, the, the impact will not be great. But if you ask me, if you're going to go down book, I mean, go down to the, go down to the book level, the answer is there's a trigger. There is a trigger. But this trigger is not strong at all. This is not the one that we usually see. And also the KSI is great in color. So the only thing that is helping you is the K, as KCX is green in color. Hence, therefore, if you buy, when you see $2, you must really run. You must really run. Okay, you got my point. Not hindsight, but it's really there. Okay, so let's say you didn't run and the price come down, right? Yes, stop out. Definitely stop out. So the question comes in. If that is the case, this guy, is it a BNB? Yes. This is a BNB, correct or not? Right, and there's no trigger, definitely for sure. This is the yellow bar. Question is, can we buy here? Well, the answer is pretty clear. The answer is to buy. Why? Because there's no trigger, but there is a KCX. But then Cal, the KCX earlier also have, right? Correct. So is it a bad trade? Yes, it's not a good trade because the KSI was also red at that point. All right, it was red also at that point. So similarly, when the price go up by $2, you should take profit. But when you are realizing it, right, when the price was going up, the KSI start to turn green already. Can you see a the difference there? Now look at it in terms of prices. When the price is actually you know, much higher in terms of prices, the KSI already turned red. But when the price came back to the same level, right, the KSI already turned green. And if you look at it even more importantly, you notice that this CCRY, eh, the blue bars are missing. Do you notice that? The blue bars are missing. Now, blue bars are missing means that the bullishness is actually in the system, right? 
And with that itself, right, we can safely say that it's buying into the market. So even if you make $2, it's fine. But if you actually just held on a little bit, you could have hold on a bit more to gain more money from the market. And that is the reason why when the market is down and the KSI is red, you don't see upside. But when the market is up and KSI is green, wow, you can see that. So this type of upside and this type of upside is different, even though the price range is the same, but the KSI separates them. So now you understand why some traders, right, when they buy here versus they buy here, the price is exactly the same, but the outcome is different. Can you see that? The outcome is totally different. So for those who understand what I just say, please key number one right now. If you understand what I just say about this goal, this goal, how you have traded, what are the things to look out for, and see the difference between the prices, please key number one right now. So I will know that you guys have uh, got the idea of this. But uh, if you say that Cal, I'm still a bit lost, then no worry. Uh, I tried to revise this on Tuesday uh, during our Super Tuesday revision, okay? Wow, so many number one. Wow, seemingly that uh, a good one third of you guys all put number one, so you all understand. Oh, that's very, very good. Okay, good, good, good. So we got the understanding now, let's look at the goal, shall we? Okay, let's go at goal. Lah. Wow, okay. Nancy, Johnny, Lawrence, Homing, Alex, Angeline, Janet, Anthony, Dennis, Eugene, Ong, Michael, Carl, all of you guys got it. Very good, excellent. Okay, now this is goal right now. Uh oh, what's happening? Well, goal is now off and it's down. All right, now it missed the 1834 just by a couple of cents. Okay, wow, well, okay. Now, someone asked me this question, Kel, how come you keep on saying 1834 when the 38.2 is 1834.87? We should go for 1834.87, right? Now, one thing as a trader for many years, I can tell you this, sometimes you need the sense to people, really, for go especially. Right, 1834 is the round number, whole number. So, of course, you take 1834. But of course, even I think 1834, I miss it by, by a bit. All right, so, okay. So sometimes you can see, I always talk about the whole number. I don't talk about the cents level for gold. Okay, so what can we see from here? Very simple, let's do the, the thing. Now, first of all, we have, this is MLP for today, right? So 1826 is MLP for today and gold now is trading at 1828, uh, sorry, sorry, 1828 is MLP for gold and 1826 now is the current price. So now it's below MLP, so make a portion. All right, and then of course, is there any near, uh, BNB recently, well, look at it, the chart, there's, uh, there's no BNB, right? There's no BNB until well, sometime we go. So with that, that means that uh, there's no upside downside for us. So in terms of MA, now the, it's still way above the MA30 and it's also above the MA200. So you can see that when the market goes above the MA200, when go above MA30 and go past MA200, straight away the algorithm kick in, that's why the market is so bullish. Can you see that? Yeah, so at the moment now for gold, I'm still looking at gold to go up to one, eight, three, four, first for the conventional chart. Now, now it's coming down, I won't do anything. I will wait for a better price to buy and then let it go, okay? Because there's no need to chase. Do not buy a falling knife. That is very dangerous to do, okay? All right, now for gold weekly chart, well, it's almost near there, but it misses a little bit but it's still above the MLP of the big, big black down uh, about five weeks ago. Okay, huh? so that is the goal. So let's look at the goal chart today. Okay, goal chart for today. Let's take a look. Now for goal chart today, it's very clear. The KSI is green in color, no blue bars. So what we do, we, what do we expect to see? That as long as the market stays above OP, it's a buy towards 1841. It should go there. But if it goes below OP right now, then what happened? Then CCYR can short and aim at KTR minus one. That means that if you want to short go just now, you should short go. And if it go, if it is, it should be coming down to KTR minus one. So this is the opening price. And it goes sideways, 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 sideways. And then you can see the BMB right here. That means the market is in, the boys are in. Then it may actually purposely come down all the way to 1822. Before 1822 is a technical level, if it hits there, 
then maybe you go back up again to go to higher level. All right, but at the moment now for this uh, goal, that is a possibility for goal to trade 1822. All right, keep the KTR before potentially bottoming out. And do not 1822 is also very nearby to the pivot to 1821. So it's a stack this moment here. So 1822 should be a draw towards it. And of course, and uh, if it hits that point, get itself stabilized, the market may go back up again. Okay, got the idea? So that's a goal for today. Then for silver, well, silver is also moving up and it's crossed the MA200 and crossed the MA30 at the same time. So which means that it's going to go into a, a death cross, right? But this death cross is a positive one. So things may actually change again. If the MA30 go up again, right, then that will actually bring back the bullishness on silver. Okay, Bullish, bullish on silver. Okay, for silver, let me take a look now. The silver indicator, you can see that. The silver indicator should be ready by today. Uh, those who want it can contact Ben. It should be ready by today. Okay, now for silver today, we can see pretty clear the opening price is now between the two pivot, but the KSI is green in color. There's no red, no blue bars. That's why you go up to K to pivot one, which you can see beautifully. You hit the pivot one, and but instead of going higher, it came down a little bit. So that is the first resistance that the market has crossed 26,042 cents. It has to cross and have to go up. And if it goes up, the first target you'll go is $26.89. Okay, that one is the upside potential, the KCB. Okay. Okay, so that is the entire movement right now for silver and gold. And last one will be the crude oil price. Crude oil is still down. I still tell you crude oil will still go lower. And I told you already, likely you go down to $70 and $69.50. I'm still waiting for that. I still believe that crude oil will come down to $69.50. Okay, I'm still pretty bearish right now on this crude oil. Okay, and of course, it's bearish in crude oil means equity market likely will also follow through. Okay, got the idea? Okay, good. Okay, so that will be all for today. All right. Okay, we're going to go into the alternate market views. So guys, if you want to hear me for the alternate market views, stay tuned. I'll come back in 15 seconds time. If you think that you're enough, you can now technically leave. I will see you guys on Monday already. Uh, this afternoon, no afternoon MEO. Today, don't have. Yeah, I got something on. I get some water first. Okay, guys, I'm back for the alternate market views. Let's just continue and see what do we have today. It's quite impactful, so stay tuned. Oops, okay. Here we go. Okay, Gonlock says that the dollar is doomed. Oh, okay. Now, this is the so-called bond king uh, saying this. Over the long term, because of the rising U.S. deficit. Now, Double Line Capital CEO Jeffrey Gunlock says that the US dollar is doomed over the long term and it will be falling uh, substantially. Now, this is where my, my forecast comes in also. Because I told you guys, likely in the short term, the dollar will go up. I told you guys, but later on, right, the dollar will fall back again. And when the dollar comes off, right, the commodity prices will shoot up and gold price will go higher. And I already tell you guys, that is my view. And apparently now, I have this so-called bond king also seemingly have the same view. So it's cool, right? 
because this is actually came in on 15 July yesterday's report and this on CNBC Pro, that's why you don't see normal. All right, but the thing is this, I got it, so I'm informing you and apparently now his view and my view something seemingly comes together. All right, so he is saying that right now the US dollar index is 92.64 and is up well, when it was below 89, we announced very publicly that we are very positive on the dollar in the near term, which is the same thing here. And then after that, right, and of course, they have $135 billion in assets under management, okay? So after that, now he are saying that short term, the dynamic should bring the dollar higher, but the near term the dollar is doomed, okay? So uh, let me bring, uh, I think I forgot to insert the video. I want you to watch this video that I got for you. Moment, huh? Okay, on the, the dollar, okay? okay? So let's just watch this video, turn on your volume to watch this. Okay, go on, huh? Positive on the dollar, below 90 on the Dixie. We're looking for it to up to about 94. And it's very strange that it's actually happening exactly that way. That's because Okay, so that is the Jeffrey Gunlock says how, how, how it's viewed the market on the dollar and I can now bring you the dollar chart to take a look for yourself. Uh, hold on. Eh? Okay, you can look at the dollar. Now this is the dollar week chart. So I change the day chart for you. Okay, so look at this, this is the dollar movement and you can see that the dollar really seems to have broken down, broken away from the downtrend line. And of course, uh, on, on the look at it, it's like likely going to go up higher. So this is what is happening right now for uh, the dollar. Okay, there is a 
possibility of the, the neckline is somewhere should be around here. This should be the neckline. Yeah. So there is a possibility for the dollar to go up to 93. So the thing is this, if the dollar go to 93 and the goal also go up at the same time, well, that would be very interesting. That means that if this is going to be like that, then of course, uh, we could we could see really go going much higher because that it means it's not going normal already. But uh, at the moment now, dollar is uh, climbing up a little bit and gold price come off. So not to say this as a knee-jerk effect, but this is what's happening right now for the dollar. Okay, so this is what you can see right here now. So 93 will be the neckline for this uh, dollar. Okay. Okay, hey, it's been blocked for now. For now. Okay, there we go. All right, now the thing is this, that the moment right now, right, the stocks have hit record level, and obviously, but same thing, right, the options market also showing that people are buying more puts recently with the expectation of something may happen in the next three months. So traders are buying more puts at the moment now. You can see that it's from Bloomberg Terminal. So is this a sign of hedging or is this a sign of worry? Because the last time we see something like this, remember, it was just before, it was just before the pandemic. It was very clear. Before the pandemic last year, the market was also the same thing, about the same number. So that was what happened and then now it's happening again. And of course now, uh, in terms of the uh, Delta, uh, the this one here, the put, now you can see that the puts are there. So the calls are not really there, but puts are increasing. So what do you think? What do you think will happen soon in the market? So traders, watch out for this, things is happening right now. Okay. Now the S&P skewed indicator, I told you before, right? It's an implied volatility. It is again went up, right? Recently it went up again. So it seems that now people are getting a little bit worried, right? Even though the S&P and the Dow Jones and NASDAQ are at a high level, right? But the skewed indicator volatility index, right? Is also at a higher level. And this is actually quite dangerous. And this is why by traders are watching this very clearly that if, you know, you have to be very careful what's going on. So this tells you that the put versus the call delta shows that, I mean, the, the, the ratio shows that, right, traders are getting worried. So traders must be careful. And of course, the S&P in fact correlationship now, despite all these things, all right, the, the um, anxiety, all right, is actually increasing. See, anxiety, the last time when anxiety increased was that back then again during the February period when anxiety goes all the way up during the pandemic time. So now with no pandemic, oh, it's good. Why suddenly the, the, the anxiety index is also going up, right? So this also tell you that, right, traders are knowing that something might potentially be happening and they are actually now paying close attention to details and they want to be protected. That's the keyword protected. So again, all these things are actually now surfacing in the market. So the question is this, do you believe that it's going to happen? And of course, it could be just only a, you know, a, a cry boy who cry wolf. Maybe just wait for this and see whether how the market react. And who knows again, the whole thing may go back down again. So all this is all possible, but at least now you are being warned. You, are, you have seen something like this and you know that if let's say the prices are not going up, example, I have to go slow. So that's the point. Then of course, this is really the first time in all our history, mankind history, okay? Junk bonds yield, the one in red, is now, sorry, the one, uh, the, the junk bond in green, sorry, the junk bonds yield, okay, from Bloomberg, Barclay, US corporate high yields total return index value, right? The one in green is now trading, uh, the yield is lower than the CPI. Now, this has never happened before. This is the first time in history, okay? First time in history. So what means, mean, that, what does it mean? That means that now, right, even the one that usually give, a, give the yield, the junk bonds are not giving the yield any higher than the inflation. So which means that now you're really, really paying great deal of inflation, inflated figures, while the so-called investment that's supposed to be helpful can't even pay to cover. So that is the first time ever. And why causes this? Obviously, it's not right. The inflation is definitely hitting in. It's just that people just really don't care, don't bother. But this one now. All right, the last one is this one here. This is the S&P index. 
versus the US government the yields. All right. In short, the bond investors can see that okay, when usually when the stock market is up, the bond investor also follow, right? Then after that, last uh, now we are seeing that the thing got a bit different. You can see now that the stock market continue to go up, okay, and the bond investors are actually now not following in a way, you know, yields form, and that is where that is not really it doesn't work this way, right? So it seems to be there is some decouple, all right, from the equity exuberance recently. So when was the last time this actually happened? Well, it happened during this period of time. Take a look. The last time the in 2019 to 2020 the bond yield and the this uh, stock market go in together but interesting in january they began to move away from one another now do understand this the pandemic only really hit us in february but apparently the boys seemingly know something that is not correct and you can see that the time the equity market continue to go up the yield so called uh, the bond markets have to go the other way around and after that, what happened? That was where the market collapsed. And once it collapsed, right, you notice that, that was where you go back again and reset once again and it moved to in tandem. But now again, we start to do this. Now, the last time when we see something like this in the short term, when this happened going up, the yield was coming down. So what happened? The equity market pulls back enough down by almost 200 points or S&P to go in line with the yield. So which means that now, right, if there's going to be any form of this, the mid between it will be somewhere around here, so about 4050. So I believe that that is the number that we could see. Shall the SP do fall? There is a first possibility to see SP down to 4050 or at least 4100. Okay, so guys, this is what I'm seeing as a pattern, but of course, end of the day, you guys make the final decision. And for me, it's all right, let's make money from the market. All right, that will be all for today. Once again, thank you for all the strong support every day coming online. And of course, I do my best to also share stuff with you. All right, thank you all. All right, for staying on, all 57 of you, enjoy yourself and happy weekend. Okay, this is Cal signing off. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.